welcome to our first episode of Cozy Holiday Boot Camp. Y'all know I always get my words flipped around. Oh, anybody who um, knows me knows I flip words. I try so hard, but I need notes. I mean, I need notes before I do anything. So today we're talking about um, preparation. Um, the title of today's video is A Wise Mama Has a Plan or Always Has a Plan. And that's something I say to my mamas all the time. So for those of you who don't know me, I am a accidental blogger. Um, not really a blogger, more like a vlogger. I do videos, I do workshops for homeschool moms. I've homeschooled for 17 years and I've worked in my local homeschool community for over 10. And um, I talk to a lot of mamas. Mamas have my heart. And I always say a wise mama will have a plan. You know, even if your state doesn't have any homeschool law or regulations, you're going to have a plan. And it's the same thing with the holidays. We've had a rough year and we need a plan. So we're going to talk about preparation. So the first point of my preparation is preparing your home. When I think about that, I'm thinking about um, <laughs> deep cleaning, um, doing prepping for the meals so that you have time to prep for the other meals, you know, that kind of stuff. So um, when I thought about this, I was just really thinking about how do we prep? Prepping and planning ahead of time gives us a peaceful home. It gives us it rains in chaos. So one of the things we're going to talk about this week, and I've got a whole bunch of little segments that y'all will find in the group, and I will have some links and stuff like that. And then we can meet up every day. You can come meet up with me and that the link is in, in the, the course. You can get it for um, jumping on. You schedule it with Calendly, pick the day that's available for you. And it schedules a Zoom meeting so that we can talk about all these things. So, cause you know, that kind of gives us a time to talk to each other and maybe brainstorm if we have a particular problem. So what am I doing to prepare my home this week? We are doing some deep cleaning. Now, the way I start, especially for holiday deep cleaning, clean the places people are going to go first. Now, I know COVID has kind of cut a lot of our entertaining down this year. I don't know how you feel about it. Um, I tend to be a little bit... Um, if I'm taking care of my body, I'm going to be okay. Treat it like any other virus. It's just a very, very contagious one. But then I have my husband who is a little bit of a germaphobe and he would like us to never go anywhere. But that's not all real, always realistic. I have elderly parents. Well, don't tell them I said that. They're not really that old. But we have to, you know, we have to take care of our families. But so my first place is to prep anywhere and deep clean anywhere that people are going to go. That's the living room, the kitchen, and the guest bathroom. Then when that is done, we can maybe a little bit slower deep clean other places in the house, but I'm not really worried about those so much. I'm thinking about the communal areas. So you'll see a funny video later this week of me and my girls cleaning our living room um, is going to be sped up a little bit and won't have any talking. I'm not going to teach you how to deep clean. Mamas, y'all know how to deep clean. We just have to hunker down and do it together and get it done. So you'll find in the group I have my Spotify cleaning list. I'm very much a 50s, 60s, 70s music type of girl. 80s, I have it all thrown in there. There's some Disney stuff. There's some non-Disney stuff. And one of my girls is working on an instrumental cleaning list in case you don't want a bunch of words. Some people, you know, everybody has different likes. So make yourself a playlist, share it with the group, share it in the group. We'll have, have lots of fun with it. So anyway, so our first, first point, our first plan this week is to start prepping and keep cleaning the places people go when we have company. We just talked about um, preparing our home. Now we're going to talk about preparing our menu. Now one thing that happens to me quite often is I get busy cooking whatever that holiday meal is and I forget to feed my children. 
So to make things easier, we're going to look at this week doing some big batch cooking. Now, I tend to do breakfast. I love cooking breakfast because um, I started doing this years ago when the kids were little. I'm not a morning person. I didn't like getting up first thing in the morning. I'm, I have five. Okay, there are five children, but when the first set, you'll, okay, the reason I say the first set is because my first four are all really, really close in age. They're like two years apart, all of them. And then I had like a big break. And then when my youngest was seven, I had my surprise, happy surprise is what we call her. She is five now. So um, I had the first four, they all woke up together. They were all busy. They all talked nonstop. And I was not a morning person. I did not want to cook a breakfast. And I didn't really want to just roast cereal at them all the time. So there were things that I would do ahead of time to make sure we had a month's worth of breakfast. Now I have included my recipe for chocolate chip muffins. And the good thing is, is you can leave out the chocolate chips and put anything else you want in there. Um, blueberries, raspberries, um, sausage. I think we've done sausage. We've done cheese. We've done just all sorts of things. Now we did make some this week. I made some with a baby. I don't bake as much as I did when my big kids were little because I tend to eat more low carb. So I don't eat lots of flour. It's just something I don't process well anymore. Um, I don't, I'm diabetic. I just don't process anymore. So anyway, but we had lots of fun and I hope you enjoy that video too. But in that video and those links, I have the recipe. It makes 48 muffins. I used to bake 250 muffins. Okay, that's about what I did when the kids were little. I would have a big container and it was kind of therapy. I always called it baking therapy because the kids would go play. They didn't really want to mess with whatever mama was doing. They might do a little bit and then they would leave. I would read a book, set a timer and just, I had like three or four trays of muffins and I would just, you know, put them through there, set a timer and just, you know, read a book. Don't leave the kitchen while you're cooking. Okay. That is never good for me to do because then I forget things are baking, even if the buzzer goes off. So that recipe is there. Um, I have one that we love that is breakfast burritos. That's by a pioneer woman. It is a big make ahead thing that she did for her kids. I think they called it a um, road trip where she was taking the girls to see um, colleges and she was leaving the kids and the husband food for the week. It's one of our favorites. It is a egg and sausage and it's a great recipe. So I have a link there so you can go to her website and find that. Other things we do was pumpkin waffles. I could not find my pumpkin waffle recipe. I may have to um, send a note to my sister-in-law where I got it from and see if she'll send me the pumpkin waffle recipe because I would make lots of waffles and then you would time them. Now that one's a little bit trickier. You can't really settle down and have a good read like you can the muffins, but you know, there are just things you can do to prep for success and you're not stressing out and your kids are have something to eat while you're doing your, your Thanksgiving cooking or cooking for the family get togethers or anything else you're doing, you have something there for them to eat that is not cereal or junk and you feel good that you've done something good. So anyway, that's something I do. Also, some other things you can do is you can do some, some Thanksgiving sides ahead of time. We'll talk about that um, during the week too. We have four days where I have time scheduled that we can get together and hang out and talk menus and we can talk deep cleaning and we can talk getting our home ready and getting our household ready. You, if those times don't work for you, just let me know and I can add other times. I, I'm a little flexible. I have my best time in there, but I can, I can move things around. I'm happy to do that. But we have four different days. We can have up to 50 people. So that will be lots and lots of fun for us to do together. You'll see where I'm, my purple paper coming out. My camera's up, my, my, I can see myself here, but you're there. Um, so anyway, so we're going to talk about that, prepping our home. So let's stop this part and we're going to move to the next slide and we'll talk about preparing our hearts. So finally, our last point is preparing our hearts. And that's really what the holiday season is about. We need to prepare our hearts and 
cultivate gratitude because it is so easy, especially this year. It has been such a rough year for most of us in one way or another. Um, everything in 2020, has, I mean, I have had, let's see, we've had four hurricanes in my area in the last two months. And that is just when you have to throw away your food from your freezer, it's kind of hard for it. Um, so many things, it's easy to concentrate and to pay attention to the bad things instead of taking time to remember the good things and to be grateful for what we do have because we have each other. We have our families. We have um, our God or our Heavenly Father or whatever, you know. We have our moral compass if you don't um, believe that everybody's different. But it is so important to teach our children to be grateful. And we, pat, we have to pattern that. Um, when we fall into a habit of being ungrateful and feeling our lack and we start speaking it out, then our children only focus on the bad and they're not seeing the good. And let's face it, our children are probably the best, wonderful, most perfect part of our life. And we want the best for them and we want them to have joy during this Christmas season, no matter how it is. So that's one thing we need to speak speak on and work together through is to be grateful. Now, if you came here through the Blessings Bundle, I know some people, most of y'all did. There may be a few that bought the, the boot camps. I do other boot camps. Um, if you downloaded the bundle, there's lots of great things in there for you to use with your kids. Make sure you notice them. I'll bring them to your attention in the um, sessions during the week on Zoom. But um, take time to, to Let's, let's govern our mouth. Let's be grateful and speak the good things. So let's grab our children and tell them the good things, even when things are hard. Um, like Lacey was making muffins the other day, and she suddenly just went crazy, and there was muffin mix all over the kitchen, and she was just making a mess, and she got really silly, and I had to stop and say to myself, okay, you can panic and say stop doing that or you can let her have her joy so let's involve and like call our children into the joy of being joyful and showing why we're grateful and mention it because i said you know it says in the bible to teach our, our children these things this is a uh, it's something with our mouth we can't automatically assume that they're going to learn to be grateful and to be joyful if we're not patterning it. So that is my challenge to you this week is begin to prepare your home, begin to prepare your menu, and prepare your household. Let's find ways to speak joy and to speak gratitude and to speak gratefulness, whether it's to the post lady, the garbage man. My mother is so great with showing thankfulness to the garbage man. She gives them cold water all summer long and gives them coats during the winter. They love her. They actually bring her um, trash can to the door now. <laughs> Every time they'll empty her trash and take it up, up a hill because she has been so wonderful about showing thanks. So let's find ways to be thankful with other people and show them. We'll, we'll come up with some stuff that we'll, we'll brainstorm. How can we show gratefulness even during COVID? How can we show that we are grateful and thankful for everything around us and show our children how to model this behavior? So that is our first episode. Hopefully we won't always be at home when we do them. Sometimes we might be out and about in our area. I have other, other videos that will drop during the week baking and cooking so you can see us doing things and we have the live sessions on zoom that you can schedule in calendar the link is in the course so that you can find that it's just not out here where everybody can find it but i'm looking forward to this spending the holidays with you i'm looking forward to making friends and we will see i will see you soon bye mamas